Central. prefer desire than to actually have something. Like we prefer, like we enjoy the chasing of something more than actually having, achieving and, get, and getting that thing. Good evening, Australia. Welcome to the show. I'm Michael Gazilny. It's Tough Times Never Last. You know, we've been doing this show for almost a decade now. And what's it all about? Uh, well, some people say, especially in Buddhism, that life comes with 10,000 joys and 10,000 sorrows. And uh, we all go through difficult times. But what I love about the show all these years is that um, down to earth and authentic people come on the show to uh, share their stories with you. And uh, it's quite amazing. And I want to say uh, my love and best wishes to everybody all over Australia. And We've been getting emails from New Zealand and Tasmania, so that's lovely. Uh, on the show tonight, Bronwyn Williams, who has got an amazing story to share. Bron, how are you, hi, darling? Hi, hi, And Michael. thank you for yeah. sharing. No, thank you for inviting me to come along. Yeah, I so love your show, and it's so nice to be part of it, so thanks. That's so beautiful. And you emailed me, and I said, um, you know, I said, let's keep it fresh, but what do you do? Yeah. And you said, you're a, you're a joyologist, yeah. and you love inspiring people. I do. Yeah, it's, um, it's what gives my life meaning, I guess. And it's who I actually authentically am. Mm. And I think, yeah, once we discover that, we're sort of on our way, I think, in life, yeah. It's amazing, Brian, and, and, and I'm just looking at your notes. You said, my mother suffered a paranoid schizophrenia and my father was an alcoholic. At age eight, due to gross negligence, you went to um, uh, government institutions until, yes. until 18. Until I was 18, yes. God bless you, darling. Yeah, so that was an interesting time. Yeah. And then you went through um, depression for quite some time. Well, I did. Once I was a, uh, once I was like in my early twenties, I, yeah. I started. Yeah, like every three years, I'd go just fall into a huge big black hole, mm. and uh, and it'd take me you know ages to get out, and then I'd be okay. And then like another two three years later, I'd go into this big black hole again. But it's interesting that continued till I was almost thirty, and mm -hmm. then I, I had my son when I was almost thirty two, and I've wow. never had it since. Never. Been depressed since. Isn't that amazing, yeah. folks? So there's a, a perfect example of someone who's gone through tough times, and we do change. Nothing's ever permanent, is it? Nothing, nothing. No. Isn't it amazing, Bron? We, it's it's good to think about impermanence, isn't it? When I go through exactly. difficult situations, or the clients I represent in court, I always remind them that life's very short and fleeting. Yeah. You know that we're only here for a short time. Yeah. And the thing is, we're actually on a cellular level. We're we're changing every. You know, actually, you and I are not the people who actually sat here. Mm. When we first sat down, the yeah. people we are now, yeah. we're no longer that person no. anymore because on a cellular level, mm. we've had all these changes happening. Mm. Like every second, we're, we're different, you know, so we can't really hold on to stuff that happened to us really when, you know, when we were like a, a child or 10 or even yesterday because the person who did that to us actually no longer exists and we are no longer that person anyway. So that, that helps me sometimes when I... Fine, I'm still hanging on to stuff that mm. I need to let go of. Gee, mm. this is great therapy for me. Because right? <laughs> I had a pretty difficult week, but ah. you're quite right, it's all impermanent, isn't it? it every, and if we think, look back, we, we know everything changed. Everything, everything, everything changed. Everything changes. And often the worst thing that we think is going to happen, we worry and worry. The worry is the worst thing we can do. And we're more fearful the more we worry. And, and our, nev our, our worries almost never come to fruition, mm. our worries. Don't you think that? I think that. Yeah, thing, I think yeah. the things we're worrying about never actually happen anyway. Mm. And we spend all that time being unhappy worrying. You've got beautiful energy, Bron. And, and, Thank and, you. Um, you know, and, and you know, I've told you that I've been meditating for many years. And, yeah. uh, and we were saying before, when we don't meditate, when we don't meditate, yeah. folks, and, and, and I'm always talking about uh, calming your mind because I think that's what causes all our problems in society. Mm. Um, some people say it's a very broken world with a lot of broken people and a lot of um, turbulent minds. And, mm. and I think that's what I see in the courts, Bron. You know, I've been around the court system for many years and um, I see 
people having turbulent minds and then adding to that turbulence by ice, alcohol, drugs and and, and you can see, you know, people's minds are just full, aren't they? Oh, we just get so delusional, so delusional. We create our own suffering because we, we're creating this mess and we're believing it's all true and then we're suffering because of it. Mm. You know, we're just creating it, suffering, creating it, suffering. But we can actually just bring our mind back, meditate a little bit, just focus on our breath. It's, it doesn't have to be sitting on your cushion cross-legged for an hour mm -hmm. every day. You know, I actually say to people, just... You know, you go to the loo five times a day or whatever, eight times a day. Just use that, you know, that 30 seconds mm. or 20 seconds or whatever just to focus on your breath, just to, you know, think about your breathing. And you, you always feel better after, even if it's 10 seconds or a minute. I used to do it yeah. um, on the way to court at the traffic lights, but Brilliant. I often got into trouble. You Why? know, people started beeping their horn because ah. they liked to green. <laughs> You're not supposed to fall asleep, Michael. Bromwell, tell me when, because um, uh, I've dealt with a lot of kids in foster homes and that. Yeah. A lot of them get into trouble with the police, you know, end up smoking a bit of dope. Um, Absolutely. Did, did you do that? Yeah, no, I actually, um, I didn't. Um, no. I never did. And I think it was because I was actually terrified of, of need, like I needed to be safe. So the thing for me was because of a lot of experiences that I had, my, my Father was sort of go a bit ballistic and different experiences. Tell me about I that, had. I just You're so to, authentic. To tell me safe. about. Tell me about most. A lot, a lot of kids grow up in you know in, in mm. rich suburbs, go to private schools, and yeah. you know they have a happy lifestyle, mm. and they go to France and New York. But yeah. your um, growing up was very difficult. It was. It, it was. And and uh, for me, it was like all of the like we would when I was a kid wouldn't wouldn't have food, and so we'd actually go to the rubbish tip, and going through the tip looking for food, we'd, you know, clean oh, out rancid, yeah. peanut butter jars, we'd eat grass and we'd eat anything that was hanging off a tree, even branches sometimes. Yeah. And was we Dad really violent? Poor. Was Dad violent when he was on the grog? Um, he was and uh, one night uh, he came home really drunk and I must have been about seven, six or seven and uh, he was really drunk and my younger sister and I, there were seven of us, but my sister one younger than me and uh, we were doing the dishes. And um, Dad had come home drunk and he was trying to eat his dinner and it was like out of the oven, was just dropping it and everywhere. And my sister and I were just giggling like, you know, like kids do. Mm. And he just went off. And he got his plate and threw it at me. Knives and forks went through the cupboards, threw every plate on me, tipped the table up, you know, on top of me. Yeah, that's a... A sad yeah, so childhood that was, memory. Yeah, that, so that's yeah, one of And, and how was mum? <laughs> Mum's mind was uh, up and down like a yeah. prostitute's pants, yeah? Yeah, she was... Up and um, down. Yeah, she was... She couldn't look mm. after us, really. There was... Yeah, but she they still stayed together. Bed. Well, well, we were separated probably two or three times a year for two yeah. weeks We might talk about two months how, you, at a time. how you got through that difficult times, but thank you so much for coming on. You're a beautiful yeah, person. And, no, um, my pleasure. Thanks and you're a beautiful me. audience. Thank you very much for watching. This is a brand new season. We'll be back very shortly. Don't go away. Welcome back to the show and thank you so much for watching uh, wherever you're watching and um, you know I, I, I used to be in the police force and I attended lots of fatals and um, uh, went through a lot of difficult times especially when children died in cars and then you know all the massacres and stuff and um, tens of thousands of domestics and I thought geez you know I got out of the police force and became a lawyer but I'm still seeing people suffering and that's why I thought we'll have this show where people can inspire others and share their stories and um, just to bring the message home that tough times don't last but tough people do and if you're suffering tonight going through a domestic situation or maybe going through depression or an addiction God bless you things will get much better uh, tomorrow will be another day uh, surround yourself with some nice people and just do your best but um, we're all perfectly imperfect, aren't we, Bron? We are. You know? We are. No matter, no matter how big, how small, how, yeah. no matter what our age, what colour, what nothing. I don't want to be yeah. perfect oh, anymore. No. Try, perfect. no one's perfect. No. Perfect compared to what? What concerned me, I was reading again in the paper today, a 15-year-old girl's suicide I... because of cyberbullying. Oh. We hate bullies, don't we? You know? And bullies often are people that actually lack self-esteem. Like yeah. they, they're looking, they need some power so they can feel better about themselves. Mm. That's the sad thing about it. Because you and me, and quite a few people here in, in the lovely studio, we're, we're outsiders, aren't we? 
we're not like the common herd, you know. <laughs> I always see the herd, the sheep mentality, and then there's the originals, you know. know the carbon know. copies and, yeah. and the originals. You, you've, you've always been an original. I've, yeah, somebody said to me when I was 17, they said, somebody was judging me quite harshly, and this fellow, he said to me, I was crying, and he said, I just want you to know you are perfect. He said, don't ever change at all for anyone. Don't change at all for anyone. You are perfect and, and you're I was beautiful. Only 17. And, um, and, and very rarely, um, viewers, does somebody come up to you and say, just be yourself, you know, even at school yeah. it all starts, you know. Johnny's better, why don't you be like your sister? No, don't do this, don't do that. It's almost like, you know, uh, there's a constant bombardment. No, no wonder so many people um, suffer from depression, you know. But just be yourself and um, enjoy being yourself. Own yourself. It's good to yeah, own yourself, Bronwyn, it? Isn't is, it? and I remember reading something that apparently Marilyn Monroe said. She said, uh, I'd rather be... Um, a terrible me than a brilliant copy of someone else. Yes. It, it was in a different, she said something, it, in, it said it in a different way, but that was really what she was meaning. I'd rather be a terrible me or a boring me than a brilliant someone else. Now, you Bron, know? you're such an exciting person. There's so many things I want to cover. Um, when did you start meditation? Um, well, I, I used to do a kind of form of meditation for mm. many years, but I actually, because I actually lived in a Buddhist centre, in a temple, and I was with a particular Buddhist group for about 10 years. Amazing. Yeah, living with monks and nuns and lay people like myself um, here in Melbourne, mm -hmm. in the mountains. And uh, so, yeah, it was lovely. I got to make the robes. And it was, so beautiful, darling. It was darling. such a blessing. I, it was so lovely. Um, but I, I learned a lot there, yes. I learned, I learned a lot I by feel. myself. And so I guess that's where I really learned about the, the correct posture to sit in and, you know, spine straight so and hands gorgeous. wherever. Okay. And it was beautiful. But what I learned really, Marco, was that we need to find a way uh, to meditate that is comfortable for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And if that's laying down, that, then that's perfect. Certainly. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be for an hour or two or, you know, it can just be for as long as... Good, and you know, and Bronwyn's so right, viewers, you know, it's such a turbulent world. Um, psychologists, counsellors, psychiatrists are cleaning up. Divorce lawyers are cleaning up, you know. It's because everyone's got turbulent minds. Relationships are breaking up, one and three. The others aren't happy because um, turbulent minds, selfish. Everybody wants it their way, you know. There's not many humble people around. And um, I spoke to a family lawyer last uh, week. 70,000 uh, couples got divorced last year in Australia. Quite disgraceful, isn't it? And it's getting worse. Um, but simplicity is so important, simplicity, because yeah. it seems like, you know, in all these affluent suburbs, they're working 14 hours, yeah. they're collecting more money, they're trying to impress more people with their cars yeah. and their designer label clothing, and, and then they, they die. Or they, and they go, in the meantime, they go to bed crying because their life hasn't, has, doesn't have any real meaning. No. Because as long as we uh, try and find happiness from external stuff, mm. instead of getting rid of everything and finding ourselves under that, yeah. and that still peaceful because place, that's where happiness is. It's not in you know, getting stuff or getting rid of the bad stuff. It's, yeah. it's, it's not about that. Because Mrs. Williams... <laughs> ah! I've never been married. I, I can't be Mrs. Ms. Oh, no, please. No person <laughs> or thing has got the power to make you happy. A lot of people don't understand that, you know. They jump from partner to partner, you know. They go through midlife crisis. Let's get the nicer car. But the thing is we get bored. The negatives start creeping in, don't exactly, they? Exactly, exactly. Yeah? Because we still think something, if we just get that, mm. we'll be happy. But you know what? I listen to Eckhart Tolle sometimes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you do. But yes. I listened to him recently and he said, um, we... we we prefer desire than to actually have something. Like we prefer, like we enjoy the chasing of something more than actually having, achieving and, get, and getting that thing. So if we want to, um, you know, have a new car, mm -hmm. uh, we think it's going to make us happy. We think about it. We think about it for months and we save up and we dream about it and think about ourselves driving it and how cool we're going to be. And Why do people have affairs? <laughs> Is that the ego, do you think? Is it the ego? Um, yeah. I don't know. I think it's a funny question. I don't know. I've never been married. I, I, don't, I really don't know. Question, you know? <laughs> I think it's an interesting question because mm. I spoke to a fellow in court the other day and, and he said, I, I had an affair, he said, Michael, with a very, um, uh, he said, I've got a beautiful wife, but he had an affair with a, a, a person who was, he said, not good looking at all. But he said, 
that person gave him a bit of love and attention and a bit of kindness. Exactly. You know? And I and I think as far as why do people have affairs, I think it's because of what I was just saying, you know, like we we, uh, we love to feel desire for something mm. more than we love to have the something. We all need a hug though, don't we? We all need we a hug. Des we desperately we? We all love. need a hug. And that's why I say all these years, show a bit of loving kindness when you go out there. You know, smile a bit more. Even if you've got problems, don't don't take it out into the world. We've all got mm. problems. But just exactly. forget self. Live simply and scatter a bit of sunshine. Forget self. Live simply and scatter sunshine. That's mm. what you do, scatter sunshine, it is. darling. I'm a geologist and that's what I do. I dig around and find the good stuff and share it around. I'm Before lucky. you go into the geologist stuff, though, <laughs> uh, oh? in the break you said, I'm not married because... Because... What did I say? Socks. Look at <laughs> I my am socks. not washing anyone's <laughs> dirty socks, and I'm not fixing them. I'm not stitching them. I'm not making food. And no for washing any... the, the dirty no way. jocks and the socks. No jocks and socks. Get them out of my. And that's shame. a good move. That's why it's so happy, maybe. And you're not one of those seventy thousand who divorced. But we'll be back very no. shortly, and we'll tell you uh, how this lady makes the world laugh. Don't go. We've got Bronwyn Williams on the couch, a gorgeous young lady who's um, gone through depression, uh, dysfunctional family, and I've never seen a non-dysfunctional family, um, but um, lived in institutions, government homes, until she was 18, and now she's a celebrity geologist and an author and a mum, and she's achieved so many great things. Um, and I, I have. I'm so lucky. Yeah, tell us about all the great yeah. things you achieved. Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, it's a funny thing because when I was young, I was always told I was an ugly duckling. I was covered in massive big brown freckles. I had no breasts, bre chest, bust. <laughs> um, I was flat. I looked like a boy. And um, I, was, I was mad on fashion. I'd always, you know, look at the fashion books. And I was in a foster home for six years. And the mother used to say to me, oh, they're all, you know, they're all prostitutes, all those women in the magazines, all the models. And, and uh, I was, like, heartbroken because I just, you know, wanted to be one of them, really. And uh, so that, that's, I ended up becoming a model, which was really nice. When I was in my early 20s, I did that for several years, and um, I even taught modelling and Isn't for a couple amazing. of years in Perth, an agency. Um, oh, I travelled a lot, which I wanted to do. I never thought I'd travel, and um, oh, I've had my own business like five or six times. I've won many. And it's an award-winning business. Yeah, I've won like four or five awards for my business. And some of the companies you've worked for, they're not small companies. Some no, of the, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, KFC, yeah, Chevron, uh, BP, Baron Day, I mean Sunrise, amazing. Like lots, some, lots, lots of yeah, big, big company. Angler so you're actually. certainly not shy. You perfectly express yeah. yourself. You really, really <laughs> own yourself, don't you? You're a beautiful soul. Thank you, um, the courage to be so resilient. A, a yes. great um, a book, and that's so important Thank to you. be resilient, isn't it? Um, exactly. A lot of bullying going on and backstabbing. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And I think, I, and I called the book The Courage to Be Resilient, yeah. to be resilient because sometimes it's easy to be a victim, you know, like it's, it's you know, we're not any happier. Mm. In fact, we're a lot, un, lot more unhappy, I think, when we're a victim, but it's nice having someone to blame, mm. you know. But I think when you have the courage to be resilient, you just make the decision, I'm getting up again, I'm getting up again. And I'm going to have a good life. That's terrific. You know, I'm just going to have a good life. What's I'm your excited. advice to some of the people in, in relationships, marriages, stuck, that, you know? Um, I, I suppose we, we build prisons out of relationships, jobs, and the people yeah. stuck in yeah. relationships being put down all the time. Yes. Or, or people going to work, they hate their job, they're being bullied. How can they become resilient when they're being bombarded all the time? Well, I, I guess one thing is, you know, we have to decide if, we, if, we're, if we're really actually not happy, we need to decide actually if we're going to, if we can change the situation, um, if we can't, can we just accept it? And if we can't, we have to be able to have the courage to leave. Mm. You know, sometimes if we can change something, good. If we can accept it, good. But if we can't, then we have to be courageous and leave uh, because, you know, we never leave any situation when it's good. Mm. You know, things have to be really bad before we leave. So we never continue our journey or our path until things are really bad. 
but people yeah, don't lot, leave when they're good. But a lot of the people don't leave because the, the biggest fear is the fear of the opinions of other people, isn't it? And uh, I was saying before, Oprah Winfrey, she's, when she turned 50, she said, finally, finally, she said, I got rid of the disease to please, the disease to please. I got rid of it about 15 years ago because uh, I was a cop and everybody called me a pig anyway and threw eggs at me. So, um, you know, I thought, no need to please people anymore. They think I'm a pig anyway, you know. Nobody likes lawyers. But we have to get rid of the disease to please. We do. And I think that's where a lot of people get stuck. And I, what I've noticed as well, and particularly after speaking to people, is that often the nicer we are or the more we bend over backwards for somebody, mm. the worse they treat us, mm. like the less respect they have for us. And that often seems to be the way. And people are often bending over backwards to please their partner or their children or their parents. Mm. When if they actually just stopped that and just maybe were a little bit braver and stood up for themselves, mm. um, they might not be treated quite so badly. And, and, and if they aren't, then they can leave. That's so you know? true, darling. Yeah. I've we had a really, have to take it. Brian, I've had a really crap week um, with, with clients, court, uh, personal mm. issues, you know. Sorry to hear that. And, yeah, but it happens and, and I'm always yeah. very authentic. A lot mm. of people always run around saying, I'm great, I'm happy. Yeah. You know, they're going, are you busy, are you busy, you know, which is a lot of superficial bullshit really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. But, but when, when we are feeling down, um, laughter is so important, isn't it? Yeah. I yeah? think, I think if, make... if I couldn't play, I think my life would yeah. be meaningless, I, you know. Play, playing is important for me. So you bring joy and laughter into companies? I do. Mostly uh, big, big companies, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, as part of... Um, they have uh, weekend conferences and things like that. Mostly it's to help bring staff together if, they've, uh, if there's, like, new management or if they've been working on a project that's huge and everybody's burnt out. Yeah. Or sometimes there's, like, clicky groups that happen yeah. and, and people are not really oh. connecting very well. Bullies. So they're not being very productive. They're not yeah. happy. So they get me to come in and I just sort of I know, know, play all sorts of games and have fun. I was in court today, everybody was very sad, but even walking mm. in here tonight, you know, there's a few sad people here, you know, they're not very happy, not many people smiling. Mm. Can you help make them laugh somehow? I can, yes, yeah. come and do a laughter workshop with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, get, we'll get some people Look, in I later. always have little props, I carry my little, yeah. um, this little prop in my bag because yeah. you never know. Who's going to be sad well, well, and on the tram? Some, let's get some of the team members, okay. some of the sad sacks here. Okay. Some of the sad people. Yeah. Let's get, come get along. Come on, everybody, we're, come we're, in. I know we're all feeling a bit down, <laughs> you know. Yes. But, but, but we're going to have in. a bit of a laugh. Fabulous. Yeah. So what do we do now? How do we cheer up? Well, we just, well, we just, well, we could do something. We could do a big yelling tantrum. Yeah. We could do, um, we could just do a huge big laugh. Yeah. I don't know. How much time do we have, Michael? Well, as much as you want. Yeah, just, could, you know. Should we just do a big, huge big laugh together? Will you yeah. join us? Yeah. How are you going? Get it ready to laugh? Here we go. We have a countdown. Can everybody else join us as well, the crew? Oh. <laughs> just join us a little bit. Not join, just join us laughing. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. That is so wonderful. And it feels great. And because you know what happens, Michael, is that you're, when you laugh, did you feel your little muscles in your cheeks? Yeah. We get these little bunny cheeks and that's sending a message to our brain saying we're happy. So it releases these endorphins immediately. We come awash with these endorphins so we feel more relaxed wow. and we just feel so much better. And wow. Laugh. Can we yeah. do it again? Meditate and laugh. Here well, we as go. we're saying goodbye. <laughs> yeah, <this is laughs> should we say goodbye? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> say goodbye laughing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, everybody. We'll see you uh, next week and make sure to uh, laugh a lot next week and tonight. All the best. Love and best wishes. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>